Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial. So I asked on my Instagram which picture, I picked four different pictures of bulldogs off Pixabay, which is like a royalty free website and I couldn't decide which one to do. And this is the picture that has, has that one. So I printed it out here and I'm also gonna put it in the screen in the corner so that you can see as you follow along. This is a really lovely picture. So hopefully this will be a fun one to draw. So hopefully the lighting is okay. Um, I've been playing around with lighting at the moment because it's got really dark now, like where it's coming into winter. It's starting to get really dark and I'm having to use lots of artificial lights. And I'm finding it really difficult to find the exact, like correct positioning to make it look the best. So I'm just playing around with that at the moment. So bear with me, but hopefully this will look okay. Especially when I zoom in here, that looks that looks quite nice. It's just it's just the reflection off the ruler and things, which is annoying me. But I don't know if there's much I can do about that. But I'll keep playing around with it and see how we go. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using primarily the Faber Castell Pit Pastel pencils. Um, I may dip into other brands, and I will let you know if I do. But I'm trying to primarily use these so that if you do have this set, you won't need anything else to complete the drawing. So let's get right into it. In this part, I'm going to be focusing on the eyes because I usually always start with eyes when doing pet portraits. That's usually just what I start with. These eyes have a mixture of kind of greens, blues, um, and that kind of greens, blues, and browns. So that's what I'm going to be obviously using. Okay, so I've just sharpened my black Faber Castell Pit Pastel, which is number 199, which is just the black one. Um, I sharpened it using this Swordfish Icon pencil sharpener. I do have a video up which shows you how to do, um, which I talk about how I sharpen my pastel pencils. But I usually use this Swordfish Icon sharpener for these Faber Castell Pit Pastel pencils. Oh yeah, and before I get into it, so this, I have transferred the image onto this piece of pastel matte paper. I'm using the sand colour for this piece because um, I thought that would work the best. And I just used some transfer paper to transfer the image onto the paper. I have got a video on my YouTube channel showing you how I do this. I mean, you can freehand it if you want to, that's absolutely fine. But just for quick quickness and ease, I just use transfer paper for this. So yeah, I'll leave that video linked in the description below and I will also link the image, the reference photo in the description below and all the materials that I've used as well. So they'll all be linked in the description below. So I'm just going to zoom into the eyes and usually I start off with a black and I tend to kind of outline outline the eyes because usually around the edge of the eyes it is very dark. So that's usually what I start off by doing. Um, when doing this, you do want a quite a sharp point. So I sharpened the black to the best that I could. And I'm pressing really lightly at the moment in case I make any mistakes, then I can bring it up with a needed eraser or go over it or something. So I'm just sort of using quite light pressure at the moment. And with pastels, you don't really want to press really hard anyway. Because it will just wear the pastels down and fill in the tube of the paper too quickly. The only thing when using this transfer paper is sometimes when you draw, you can see, I don't know if you can see here, but you can see focus you can see the pencil the transfer line through the pastel so you sometimes you have to just go over it quite a few times to cover it up but it's not really a problem it doesn't cause many issues so
Okay, so that's the outline kind of of one eye and then I'm going to go do the exact same with the other. I'm hoping this audio won't be too echoey either because I've had to shut the room, the door to the room that I'm in so that my cats can't come in while I'm doing this tutorial because otherwise they'll just, they'll just distract me and try and get all over my desk and stuff and yeah, I try and kind of need to focus right now when I'm filming so if it sounds a bit echoey that's because I've shut the door for some reason it sounds a little bit echoey in here sometimes when I shut the door but can't really do much about that either but hopefully it's okay So that's kind of the basic outline. Um, actually, I might add in the tear ducts very, very slightly here just so I can see where they are a little bit better. Like that. There we go. So around the eye, around the pupil of the eye, there's kind of like a dark blue kind of tint. So I'm going to get a dark blue pastel pencil. Let me just find it. Ah, no wonder I couldn't find it. It is a tiny little one where I've used it so much. So I can't tell what number this is, but it's something five seven. But it's a really dark blue. I'm just gonna go around the edge of the pupil using this, this color here, just very, very slightly. I will come back with that pencil so I'm going to keep that one out and then for the base of the eye colour you can see it's kind of like a yellowy creamy kind of colour so I'm gonna go with I might go with this one as a base and then I can deepen it up with other colours so this is shade 102 I'm just gonna fill in all these empty gaps apart from the highlight so I've left the highlight section of the eye completely blank because if you want that to be quite bright and stand out you don't want to add any colour on top first before adding the white because it will make it stand out less and it will make it less white so I didn't really want to do that and with this colour I'm going slightly over the pupil a little bit because the pupil isn't as big as I'd done it and then it kind of adds this like blurred effect around the edge as you can see here so it kind of makes it look a little bit blurred in so I'm just doing the same on that eye as well Eye, there's also a little bit of green so I'm gonna try and find a green that I think would work for this potentially this color which is a 173 so I might use this one to sharpen it up a little bit right I've tried to sharpen this one as much as I can but it's a bit small to fit in my sharpener so that will have to do um, but yeah, I'm going to go in with this green that I said, shade 173. And I'm just going to add in a bit of green around the edge of the pupil as well. Not too much, I'm just going to press very, very lightly with this. and around the outer edge of the iris as well. Bless me. 
Oh. I'm not ill, don't worry, that's just a random sneeze. So that's kind of made it a bit a lot more greeny. Deepened it up a little bit as well. So you can tell the difference between the two eyes. That one looks very like it doesn't it just looks very 2d and like blank and then this one looks a lot more 3d and realistic so it's getting there slowly i'm just gonna add in some green on the other eye as well in the same kind of areas around the pupil and around the outer of the iris as well When choosing colours for drawing, I have recently uploaded a video which shows you a very basic way to do this, which is using Microsoft Paint and you can select, you can kind of select a section and it'll show you what the colour is in that section. So I'll link that video in the description below as well because you might find that helpful for this tutorial or just for any of your other drawings in general. So I'll link that in the description below as well in case you would find that helpful. I don't tend to use that anymore, I just kind of do it by eye, but I've been drawing for a few years now, so, well, most of my life, but like properly for a few years, so I'm not gonna, I don't really use that anymore, but it is a very handy tool. I feel like this navy blue might be a little bit dark for part of the parts. I feel like I need a slightly brighter blue maybe for some parts. So I'm going to pick this blue, which is shade 155. I'm going to pick this and just add in a tiny bit of this blue just to brighten it up a little bit. Not too much, just add in a smidge of this just to brighten the blue up a little. Just it's not too dark. I'm also going to add in a tiny bit of brown as well, I think, to the eyes, but not very much, just a very light amount. Okay, that's that. Um, and then brown. Might use this brown, which is shade 176. I'm just going to add in a tiny, tiny bit of brown. This one's a little bit darker in this kind of area of the eye, so I'm just going to add in a little bit. With the brown. I'm also going to go back in with the yellow which I use for the base just to brighten the eyes back up a little bit but I'll do that in a second. And going back in with the navy up here because I can see it's a little bit darker in this corner and there's a little bit more of a blue tinge. The good thing with pastels is you can keep kind of going over the top of colours and you can almost get rid of some colours if you make a slight mistake as well, which is really handy. Whereas with coloured pencils, you can't really do that. Once coloured pencil is down on the paper, it's down on the paper. There's nothing you can do about it. That's one other reason why I really like pastels. They're just a bit more forgiving and you can kind of layer them up a lot easier. You can layer light, lights on top of dark, whereas with coloured pencils, you can't do that. So... That's one thing I really don't like about coloured pencils. I do. I would like to use coloured pencils a little bit more often because I think they produce a completely different effect. But for the most part, pastels is my favourite medium to use. I'm just adding a bit more of the yellow again just to brighten a little bit up again bring the eye back to life a little bit and then I'm, in a minute I'm going to focus on the highlight of the eye which will really finish it off and bring it to life.
Ouais. Going over the pupil again to deepen it up because where I'd used some of the other colours it had taken away some of that deepness that the black black causes so I'm just deepening up around the edge again making it stand out a bit more Same with the other eye. I generally try and work on both eyes at the same time so that I use the same colours for both. Okay, so that's that. And now I'm going to start on the highlights. So, I'm going to find a white. Okay, so this is the white I'm going to use, which is shade 101. Faber Castell do do another white, which is shade 101, but this one's a soft, and then there's a medium. And I'm going to use the medium because it's a little bit more bolder. Whereas the soft one, it's kind of, well, exactly as it says, really, it's a bit softer and it's less of a harsh white, less pigmented, really. So I'm going to go for the medium one. I'm just going to sharpen it up. Okay. It's not really sharpened fully because I think the sharpener is getting a little bit blunt, but that will do. Sharp enough. And I'm just going to blank in, start by just blanking in the highlight of the eye. And then you don't want to leave it just like that because that just looks quite random like it's why is that there it just looks like a white blob so you kind of want to then add in so if you look at the highlight in the eye it's not just white there's some other colors and shading in there so yeah i just map it out first so that i know where it is and it gives it a base And then there are some blue, there is some blue within the highlights. So I'm going to use the dark navy blue, the little tiny one. Just add in some light shadings of blue in the highlight. just softens the highlight up a little bit and makes it slightly less harsh and then I'm gonna add a little bit of a lighter kind of blue so I'm going to use this shade here, which is shade 140. And I'm just going to add in a little bit of this just to brighten up the blue in there so it doesn't look so dark. Like that. 
Then in the highlights, you can see at the top, there's like the hairs around the eyes have been reflected into the highlights. So I'm gonna go back in with the black and I'm gonna kind of just add in some of those reflections. like that. So that's pretty much it for the eyes. I'm just going to use the white and just brighten it up again very slightly. There we go. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the eyes at the moment. I may come back and add some bits as I see fit later on, but that's the kind of idea of it. And then in the corner of the eyes here, in this one here, there's a little bit of a, gr a light gray kind of color. So I'm gonna just add in that. I'm using shade 233, which is just kind of a mid-tone gray. And this one here is a lot darker on this side, so I'm just shading that in mostly black, but just over the top of the gray. I'm just gonna use a slightly lighter gray just to add a little highlight into that one. Like that. Okay, and that's pretty much the eyes done. This part would be really short if I just ended it there, so I'm gonna start adding a little bit of the fur around the eyes for this part, and then after that, I'll start part two, but yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start by using this shade, which again is a very tiny pencil, why is it not focusing, which is shade 177. And I'm gonna start kind of shading in roughly the areas around the eye, which are the darker brown. So let me show you in the picture. So like this bit here, around here, this kind of area, yeah, this darker brown. I'm gonna kind of shade in that and then blend it out with the blending stump. And that'll be kind of the base. I mean, quite often I would use a pan pastels, um, pan pastel base for drawings like this. But for the sake of this video, I'm just using just the pastel pencils on their own to use the least materials possible. I may do another tutorial at some point, which is using more pan pastels as well. But for this one, I've decided to use basically just the pastel pencils to use minimal supplies possible so that more of you can follow along with this. So there's no need to buy a tons of tons of different pastel supplies because I know pastels are not cheap, especially pan pastels, they're really not not very cheap. But they are good, I do like them. I like using them. I'm just doing a very, very light layer. Not pressing very hard at all, because if you press hard, it will use up loads of the tooth in the paper and then you won't be able to add layers later, which is what we want to do. We want to add in a lot more layers onto this fur later. But I'm just doing a, a base at the moment and then I'll blend it out using a blending stump, which is just like a little paper stump like this. Um, it's just kind of condensed paper into a little stick form and then you can just use it to lightly blend out the pastel like that and it just blends it and it creates a really nice base layer to then work on top of.
recommend doing the base layer. I'm kind of trying to roughly stick into the direction of the fur, not completely, because I can change it later, but I'm just trying to stick roughly in the right direction that the fur is going, just as like, um, so it's just like a guide for later. Just makes things a bit easier further down the line. The brown that I'm using here is a very flat kind of brown, I don't, but it's kind of good for the base, but I will be adding some more ready kind of toned browns on top because that will bring it to life a lot more. This is just a very, very plain brown. So we'll be adding other colors on top, but it's always good to have a nice base just so that not so much of the paper is going to be showing through. I've just kind of done a base there and then I'm just going to grab that blending stump that I used earlier. It has got a bit of another colour on the edge so to stop too much of that transferring just getting a scrap piece here and I'm just rubbing the excess off. Just so that not too much of that orange transfers onto the drawing. So then I'm just going to Gently blend this out. So you can see it still kind of leaves the general direction and some of the strokes, but it does blend it in a lot nicer. So it just creates a nice base, so that, as I said, so the paper doesn't show through too much. Just makes it easier further down the line. When you add further layers, you don't have to worry about covering up every inch of the paper because you've got this base layer already down.
Okay, so that is the base layer done. And then I'm gonna go in with, I've got this, which is kind of an orangey ready brown, which is shade 283. I'm just gonna go over this kind of bit here a little bit. And around here, there's kind of just a few, a few bits which have a slight reddish tone to them. So I'm just gonna go over those very slightly with this. And when doing this base layers, obviously you'll look at this and it looks pretty rubbish. This area here just looks really bad, but just bear with it because it does get better the more layers you add and then you can add details on top and it does all come together in the end. Just at first, it's always a little bit like, hmm, this doesn't look great. And quite a lot of people then stop at this point and give up because they think it doesn't look very good. But the more you keep going with it, and the more you keep adding and just keep going and going and going, adding more layers, eventually it will end up looking good. Sometimes you just gotta persevere with it a little bit longer. Okay, so that's the kind of reddish toned areas pretty much done. Well, not done, but I've added in that little bit of more reddish tone around that, that area there. I'm gonna go in with this shade, which is 176, which is another brown. And I'm gonna start adding in more detailed strokes. So they're gonna be more specific in the direction the fur's going. But like the only thing about this Faber Castell set is there's all, out of all the browns, there's not like a really deep brown in the set, which does annoy me. So sometimes you, I have to go in with other brands to deepen up the brown. For example, there's um, some by Derwent, which is really nice. They have some nice brown shades, which are quite different to the Faber Castell ones, but. But yeah, I'm gonna try my best just to work with the Faber-Castell ones for this video. Hopefully the microphone won't pick it up, but my neighbours upstairs are being quite loud. I can hear them moving around and talking above me, so... Yeah, because I'm in a ground floor flat, so we can quite often hear the people above us. It is a purpose-built flat, so it's not too bad, but sometimes you can hear it. I think they have people around at the moment, I think that's why. My camera is about to die, like the camera battery, so I'm gonna end this part here. Um, yeah, so this is part one. It's quite a short part, just getting the eyes done and stuff. And then later on, the next part will be quite a longer part, which I'm probably gonna focus on all this bit around the head here. Like all this kind of fur around the head. So I hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully I'll see you in the next part, which will be up in a week's time. So I will see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye.